Welcome, and thank you for being part of this important clinical study. This video will walk you through what you need to know. Let's start by reviewing what this clinical study is aiming to learn. This study will examine how the leads of implantable cardiac devices move inside the body as the patient moves. We are working with several leading institutions to gather a large body of data specifically looking at the movement behavior of the lead inside a patient's body. We will be recording extremely detailed imagery and then mapping it for later analysis. This information will help us design better devices in the future. As with any clinical study, we have extremely specific rules all imaging professionals must follow to ensure we get accurate data. For this reason, we ask that you carefully follow all instructions precisely. And of course, if you have any questions or something is not clear, feel free to ask. All of the imaging data will be anonymized per HIPAA guidelines. For this study, we'll be using biplane fluoroscopy to capture the movement of the lead inside the patient's body as they do very specific movements. In some cases, the patient will be asked to wear an accelerometer. First, Velcro straps will be placed around the patient's bicep and the chest. Next, two small boxes will be placed on specific locations to monitor the angle of the patient's arm compared to their chest. The patient won't feel anything other than the strap from having these in place. Let's dive into the specifics of today's procedure as it relates to gathering information needed for the clinical study. First, prior to entering the exam room, patients will have viewed a short video explaining the study and what to expect during the procedure. Our hope is that this will prepare the patient for a successful procedure since your instructions will not be entirely new to them. Here are a few things you'll need to keep in mind throughout each procedure. Once the C-arms are positioned, they cannot be moved until a calibration image set is obtained. The placement of the machines near the table might be quite awkward for the patient to maneuver around. They'll need to be reminded to be careful as they lie down so they don't hit their head. You'll need to be extremely careful to ensure that after the arm movements are confirmed and the C-arms have been set, the equipment is not moved at all, either by you or by the patient. Movement will result in images being unusable. Please instruct the patient to sit on the table and then carefully lie down onto their back. They should position themselves so their feet are at the bottom of the table and their head at the top of the table. Please confirm that the patient is not wearing a watch, jewelry, or a bra, or any other garment that contains metal. Ask the patient which side of their body their cardiac device is located. All of the imagery you will be recording today will be focused on that device. During today's procedure, you will take the patient through a series of three specific acquisitions and capture imaging of the lead inside the patient's body as they do two arm movements and one static image set. Before each of the two arm movements, have the patient practice the arm movement. Provide clear instruction as they do it. Starting with the can at the lower right of the field of view, acquire a quick image at the beginning and end of both arm movements to ensure the device will not go outside of the field of view. Make adjustments to position as needed until you are able to fit both movements into the field of view. If at this point it is not possible to get both movements in the field of view, you will have to have the patient exit the exam room after each movement to acquire a calibration for each movement. A calibration file must accompany each image intensifier location setup. This is a requirement to create usable data after the practice, provide any corrective action or feedback. Also tell the patient that prior to the actual imaging starting, you'll say X-ray on so they know when to start their arm movement. 
For the first movement, with the patient's arm resting at their side, instruct the patient to bring their device side arm above their head and grab onto your hand. Ask the patient to pull with a little resistance and then bring it back down. This movement should take about three to four seconds each way. Here is a typical device travel for the arm above movement and into the arm across movement. You'll notice that the device starts in the bottom right corner for both scenarios and the can and lead are clearly visible throughout the frame. For movement number two, the patient will again start with their arm resting next to their body. Ask them to bring their arm over toward their opposite shoulder, pulling against it slightly for some resistance and then returning it back to their side. This should also take three to four seconds each direction. Please take care not to move the C-arms or image intensifiers. You are allowed to translate the table only so that the cardiac silhouette is in the field of view. For the third and final acquisition, you'll instruct them to put both arms above their head. Tell them the table will move as you slide the patient table towards the C-arms to move the heart into view. Ask the patient to take in a breath and hold it during the three-second x-ray. That will conclude the patient involvement. You'll need to slide the table and ask the patient to slowly come up to a seated position. Give them a few minutes to get their bearings. Be sure to return anything the patient removed prior to the procedure, such as jewelry, watch, etc. Thank them for their participation and send them on their way. After all three data acquisitions are done, have the patient carefully get off the table and exit the room. Do not move the image intensifiers or the position of the C-arms. Put the calibration object on the table on its side with the larger BB facing upwards. You can translate the table only to get the phantom into the field of view. Limit moving the table up and down as this may automatically move the image intensifiers. If this happens, the image data is not usable. Acquire a few seconds of biplane cine on the phantom to include at least 13 BBs in both planes in addition to the large marker at the top. Here are good examples of intracardiac biplane images. The leads are clearly visible and in the middle of the image and foreshortening is avoided in both views. Other things we are to look out for. If the anchor sleeve is visible, that is a plus but it may not show for all patients. Avoid over or underexposure of the lead. Here is an example of a good on-face image. And this is an example of a bad on-face image. This is an excellent phantom image. A biplane phantom set needs to accompany each image intensifier setting. Both arm movements in intracardiac can be accomplished with one calibration, which would limit the patient movement off the table between images. Here is an example of an unusable image. In this case, the lead traveled outside the field of view and cannot be traced throughout the entire arm movement. Ultimately, the images you gather as part of this study will be put through a custom analysis to evaluate curvature as a result of movement. The results will inform fatigue testing and reliability predictions. We are grateful to you for being part of this important clinical study what we learn during this process will inform our design process as we develop the next generation of life-saving devices.